Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. And I'm speaking from the subject, all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And I want you to see how all things work together for the good. God popped this analogy in my mind. Some of you may have heard of pointillism or dotalism in artwork. And you start with a bunch of dots and you go in with the shadows and the highlights and all of that. And the, all the dots together form the picture, but it looks like chaos at first. And I want you to see what happens when you're living in the dark area of your life. Sometimes you are living wow. Sometimes you are living. Uh, Rashad just said he was, uh, who said that? Let me see. I got to see who said that. That was Rashad. Yeah. Rashad uh, just typed in. Uh, he had been thinking about that very scripture today with exclamation points. Okay. So this is the idea that God popped in my head. What I'm going to, I'm going to show you this picture, but I'm going to start in the darkest area first. I want you to see if you can figure out what it is because it's basically nothing but dark. Now that looks like a dark area in our lives, right? That's dark. That is not fun to look at. That doesn't look pretty, does it? Matter of fact, it's pretty ugly. Look at all that. Just looks like a mess. Just one mess. Looks like confusion. Mm, mm, mm. That's ugly. Almost looks like a little disease, doesn't it? But then as you back it up and you wonder, well, why am I in this dark place? That's pretty dark right there. And then you move it over. And as you keep living, your life gets in the real dark spots. That's real dark right there. That's not a fun area to live in. That's dark. And we don't like the dark areas of our lives, but the dark areas of our lives play a role. It has a purpose. It's doing something with us. There's a deep work God is doing in us through the dark areas of our lives, through the trials. And then we ask God for some light and he'll let us have some light. There's some light right there. Oh, that's a little easier to deal with but you still got to deal with all the blemishes. Look at all those blemishes. Now, as you can zoom out and you start to realize, oh, oh, that's a picture. Oh, I see what I'm looking at now. It has a glass covering, so it's reflecting the computer. Sorry about that. It ends up being a picture. And then our lives start to make sense. Because we're consulting with God, asking him, what is going on with all this darkness? But it was ugly up close, wasn't it? It was ugly going through the trials of our lives. And then as the years go by, you start to see the big picture. And it makes sense according to your calling, according to your gifting. It all starts to make sense. This is a picture I did of my father years ago. Now, what I want to share with you is when your life seems like it's lived in the shadows and your life seems like it's got cracks and crevices in it, remember, every shadow, every dark area is part of the picture. God is creating a masterpiece in your life. Look at all that dark area. That doesn't look pretty, but that's what gives the picture depth. Look at the different colors on his lips. That's not pretty. But when you look at the big picture, the picture makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't that make sense? The darkness had to be created because he was wearing a black shirt. The darkness up in here had to be created in order to see the curvature of his forehead. Do you 
get what I'm saying? Now, there's the picture. I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. it doesn't come out too light. Now, when you see that, you look at, just look at my face. If I'm doing artwork and I'm comparing artwork to God's handiwork in our lives, you look at artwork. You want the face to be perfectly smooth and everything to look nice. But the face has cracks and crevices and dips and dimples and, and bumps and all kind of stuff. And you've got hairs that are out of place. And, and then you've got shadows. Now, if I take the shadow, if I take my face and come real close, this area is dark, isn't it? It gets darker on this side. And it's really bright on this side. Well, that doesn't make this side any worse. This side contributes to the whole picture. And when you zoom out, you see what's really going on. And you say, oh, those are eyes. Oh, those are, that's a mouth. That's the under part of the chin. Okay, so I remember my mother used to say, when you draw, Patty, draw what you see. Don't draw what you think you see. Let me show you this one. This right here, I can show you shadow. And you can say, okay, there's a whole lot of movement going on there. You can't make out what's going on, but you see the dark area. Well, what is that darkness going on right there? That's dark. But you look at the big picture and you zoom out. That dark is necessary. It's called the necessary evil. Look at that dark right there. That needs to be there under her cheek. But you zoom out and you realize, oh, the dark was her hair. That's what that is. That's her hair. That's the big picture, you guys. If you're not willing to, to go through the darkness, you're not willing for God to do a finished work in your life. Are you willing for God to do a finished work in your life? Are you willing for God to, uh, will you trust God in the darkness? Will you trust God through the chaos? Will you trust God in the confusing part of your life? Will you trust God where you can't make out what's going on because it just looks like your life is cluttered with blemishes? We trust God when you see a bunch of black, of black smudges in your life. When the shadows come in, when the shadows come in and hover over your head, will you trust God through that? And the reason I say that is because when God is creating us, he's creating a big picture. He already sees where it's going. He knows what you look like. He knows what your hair looks like, what kind of features you're going to have. He knows what your personality is going to be because he's the one creating you. You don't know. So from childhood on up, you think the bullying, you think folks that made fun of you, you think the people that hurt your feelings, you think all of that should never happen. But I'm going to tell you this, sweetheart. That's part of the big picture. You must have shadows in order for the highlights to make sense. You must have dark areas in your life. Look at all that darkness right there. You must have it. But even the darkness, as you can tell, comes with a highlight. Because God's light is always somewhere in that darkness. And he will shed his light in your darkness to help you find your way, to help you keep your bearings, to help you not lose hope. Whatever you do in the darkest periods of your life, lean on God, call on God, depend on God, and trust God. God through the darkness because the darkness is bringing you somewhere. Look at all that darkness right in there. Look at that. 
Look at those, those dips and those folds, those different variations of color. That, that doesn't feel good to us. We want one solid, smooth color. But it's not the smoothness that makes out the image. It's all of the irregularities and the, the shadows and the imperfections that creates the image. Trust that God is creating an image when he allows the darkness to rear its ugly head in your life. When he allows Satan to attack you, that too is part of your image. When he allows people to hurt your feelings, that as well is part of your image. Because when you go to God, then God brings light into the darkness. He brings the highlight. And that's when the healing comes. When you ask him to heal you when you're hurt. When you go to him to help you forgive when you want to resent and, and act in bitterness. When you want to retaliate. You go to God for mercy. And God will give you everything you need. And the more you go to God, the more sense your picture will make when you put the shadows and the light together and you realize God is working a deep work in me. And when he gets through with me at every level, because there are constant levels to climb, at every level, God will use you mightily if you have the right spirit. Now you can slow down your progress by falling into the works of the flesh. Hmm. What are the works of the flesh? Some of you look at me saying, what are you talking about? Works of the flesh. Galatians chapter five. And we are going to, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the Lord. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have, I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things, do such things, do such things, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, which is another word for self-control, okay, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen. I'm stopping there at verse 25. Now, here's your big picture, you guys. And I got to make sure this is where you can see it. Here's the big picture. Now, do you want your picture to turn out to be beautiful like this? Or do you want an unfinished mess? An unfinished mess that God cannot and will not use. That my brothers and sisters, is up to you.